Hi, this is Mike and Andrea with Team Witch Doctor, and we're here to talk to you about our second fight on Battle Boss this season against Blacksmith. So we know that his robot is, is tough, his hammer hits hard, yeah. fire hammer, need I say more. He had some really great fights last season uh, against Minotaur, the first one that comes to mind, one of the best fights of last season, I think. And not only did he change the hammer design, but he pretty much overhauled the whole robot, so it's much tougher. It's all abrasion-resistant steel, so we knew it was going to be one tough robot to fight. Yeah, to give you an idea, abrasion-resistant steel is what we make our wedge out of, which was enough to hold up against Tombstone. He makes his entire robot out of this, so it's really, really serious material. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our changes following the Yeti fight, because we had a lot of work to do. We did. Um, the main thing after our Yeti fight was, as you guys saw, we lost because we smoked our drive motors. And if you haven't seen that, watch our breakdown from the previous... Uh, previous fight we yep. go into extreme detail about what we what we intended to change after the last fight and how we plan on accomplishing that so we actually were able to switch to the 24 volt long mags mm -hmm. um, successfully which required a lot of frame modification uh, to get those motors to fit in here we reduced our battery count uh, to drop some weight and somehow we made it in right at 250 um, for the blacksmith fight so we were really lucky there yeah, and one thing we were really worried about Blacksmith is um, actually being able to get under him to get a good hit. So as you saw in our Yeti fighter, Wedge had a front lip on it, which you'll notice is actually missing on this version of the robot. So we had a, a team meeting to decide whether or not we should keep that on. We knew it was risky, um, but one, we ran out of time. We just didn't have time to make a modification like that. And two, um, considering the force that Blacksmith put on his robot, um, which we suspected he would use, we thought it might help us get under him a bit more in that scenario. Uh, actually, because the, the the lip was actually damaged in the Yeti fight, uh, basically the entire lip was bent down on one corner. One of the last hits that Yeti got on us did quite a bit of damage to the wedge. So uh, since we were focusing on replacing the motors, we didn't really have time to replace the wedge. Basically, we had to repair the, the wedge that we used against Yeti. And so we took it out to the Lincoln Electric uh, welding area and the guys plasma cut the wedge and we spent a few hours out there you know grinding it uh, to get it kind of flat um, and you'll see we had a few opportunities in the fight that that we weren't able to capitalize on because that wedge actually basically kept our robot from from uh, being able to get a good hit on them. Um, so right before the match some additional prep that we did on the robot since obviously blacksmith has a fire hammer um, is since we have two different configurations for the ribs we have ones with holes ones without holes uh, and we used the ones without holes for the Yeti fight. We opted to stick with those. Obviously, we want to try to deflect as much fire uh, as possible if stop that from getting in the robot. Um, so, and another thing from, from a fire uh, perspective is uh, Paul found some fireproof cloth uh, from McMaster. So we bought some of that and put it all inside the robot because inside the robot there's actually open uh, passageways. So if, if uh, Blacksmith was able to shoot fire down here, in the middle of the robot, it would be able to actually get into our delicate electronics. <laughs> so for our uh, intro with Blacksmith, um, for every match we've been trying to do something clever, uh, funny against our opponent. So in the first fight, uh, Paul had the great idea to buy those Yeti dolls. <laughs> and he you know, voodooed up one of the Yeti dolls and we use it uh, in our intro against Yeti. Uh, so for this fight, Paul thought of, uh, we we're trying to figure out what to do and, and Paul came up with having an inflatable hammer. He originally wanted to get like a four foot inflatable hammer. Turns out there's a really limited supply of those for overnight delivery. So this, uh, this was the next best thing. <laughs> yeah, of course we're looking at Amazon Prime and like what can we get the day of yeah. and the day before. So uh, Paul bought like a, pallet full of those inflatable <laughs> hammers so we all basically stood there and made you know yeah so the idea was reference. that we were you know kind of hinting at the fact that we were going to fight a hammer with another hammer and then kind of throw them off and do our usual voodoo fingers so we were not the only ones making changes before that fight obviously blacksmith made his own share of changes um so one really cool thing that he did uh which i actually didn't know until after the fight was that he actually put um it wasn't really a voodoo finger, but he drew something on the front of the robot. It was a Norse symbol. Do you know? Some Norse god thing. Chant. I don't know. He's very uh, Viking. Norse. Yeah. I don't know why, but. So he was trying to fight voodoo with voodoo, which is pretty funny because we were joking about fighting hammers with hammers. So 
Uh, but a, a real change that he made to his robot was those hinge forks that he added on the front. So we talked a little bit about the fact that we're worried about those because, I mean, with Blacksmith, if he gets under you, he's going to push you across the arena. You know, he has some real drive power. Um, and those hinge forks are going to be on the ground perfectly every time. And we knew they were a AR steel, like we talked about before. So they were going to be really hard. Um, and that's, that's exactly what he used. And you can see that they were effective and he was able to push us even in those last uh, 20 seconds of the match right under that or right into those screws. So you want to talk a little bit about your fight strategy driving during that match? Um, yeah, so the fight strategy against Blacksmith uh, is obviously I was trying to be very defensive with Yeti um, and I knew I had to be very defensive with Al going in or coming out of the, uh, the square at the beginning of the match. So we wanted to kind of see what his plan was. We knew that basically the only way he can attack us is with the hammer. Um, so we figured he was going to be the aggressor in the match. And obviously with the hinged forks that Andrea mentioned, we knew that he was going to be able to get under us pretty easily. Uh, so basically I tried to just kind of wait out to see what he was going to do. So it was really a driving match for me at the beginning. And you guys, I mean, you were probably within... I don't know, six to eight feet of each other the entire match. So a lot of matches you see the robots kind of drive around and spend some time apart, but the two robots were on top of each other the whole match. And that's because you and Al did really such a great job driving on both sides. Yeah, so at first I was trying to be a little defensive, but I, th I realized that either he was waiting for the perfect opportunity to, to swing the hammer or, or maybe his, there was some issue with his hammer. So we, we realized at first that he wasn't coming out swinging like we, th he, thought, or we thought he was going to be. So we kind of stepped up the aggression on the driving. Um, and Al's a great driver, and he, you know, his robot is built for, for taking hits. So we basically had to just keep going at him. And there was a, we were basically dancing around for you know two minutes. And he did get a few hammer swings. But after the fight, we did learn that he had some issues with his uh, speed controllers. So it would have been a great fight if he was able to you know keep the hammer yeah. swinging. But and we're definitely upset that Blacksmith wasn't at 100%. Part of the reason we were looking forward to the match so much was because of you know, Al's iconic camera that just never stops working. So that was surprising to us. And, you know, you're in the heat of the fight, so we didn't really notice that he was having a hammer issue, I would say, until after the fight that we had a chance to step back and really think about it. Mm -hmm. So a few things that came up in the fight um, that were detrimental to us is, obviously, we, we lost one of our tires in the middle of the fight, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but uh, that basically reduced our traction on the ground, and it was one of our rear wheels. So basically, um, when Al was able to get under us right in the last 30 seconds of the fight, yep. we only had w essentially one tire on the ground that was trying to out push him. So he was able to push us across the arena really easily that moment. And yep. he just lined it up perfectly and was able to get us right onto those screws. Um, and that was definitely no crap moment for us because yeah. we had, you know, it had been such a high, high uh, intensity back and forth match. And we had some good hits on him. But he was, you know, showing dominance the, the entire match as well. So it wasn't like a obvious, uh, it wouldn't have been an obvious win even, even at that point. And getting up onto the screws right at the last 30 seconds was like a, yeah. you know, kick us while we're down kind of, a, kind of a thing. Yeah, and, you know, when you're in the middle of one of these fights, I mean, everything, it seems like it happens in slow motion. And you can see our reactions, both ours and the blacksmith team. I mean, Al basically drops down to his knees because he's so happy that happened. And we're just... You know, I, I couldn't believe it. I throw my hands up in the air. You're there trying to flap the self-writing mechanism and see if you can do anything to get off of that. Um, and there's, there's been a lot of controversy about how we got off the screws. So let's talk a little bit about that because I know there's a lot of hate on the internet right now. The screws actually decided quite a bit of fights in season one and BattleBots was also going through a lot of motors because every time a robot would get stuck on the screws, the motors for the screws would blow. The screw reversal system was implemented in season two and it's actually an automated process. So as soon as the screw senses a load, it will stop for a few seconds and then reverse. And that both saves the screws and also keeps the match going so that the arena doesn't really decide as many matches as had happened in season one. So for everybody that's uh, commented on the internet, it was an entirely automated process. We had no control of it. Uh, we knew of the process. Obviously in that moment, we were not thinking the screws were gonna reverse just because you know, you're in the heat of it. And um, we didn't pay anybody off, so yeah. that's, a, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, we definitely can't emphasize enough how much we've read about this on the internet.
but we have no special pull with the producers. It wasn't Voodoo. It was uh, BattleBots programming. And actually, if you look at the main event right after our fight, you'll see that Lockjaw lands on the screw after Bronco throws him on, and it, they just reverse and kick him right off of there. It was just more pronounced in our fight because of how late in the fight it was and because we were practically head first in there, which is something, a big change we made for this year is that the robot's a lot bigger than it used to be. So if this had happened last season, I think our whole entire robot would have fit right behind the screws and they wouldn't have been able to get us out even if they reversed. But this year, if you look closely, these ribs actually get hung up on the border of the arena and keep us from going all the way down. So that was really, I think, our saving grace in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but then all of a sudden the screws reverse with, what, seven seconds left on the clock. Yep. And, you know, we were intently watching, hoping that we would somehow get off of there. And when the screws reversed, it pushed Witch Doctor right out. Um, and we knew, you know, the last, the, the, the thing that stands out the most in the judge's mind is what happens at the last 30 seconds of the match, obviously. So we didn't want that to be the thing that they think about when they make a judge's decision. So as yeah. soon as the robot came off the screws, I hauled over to Al, tried to get a f another decisive hit in at the end. And <laughs> That was our very first judge's decision ever. It was definitely the most exciting end to uh, any of our fights, at least. Um, we were confident that we had the damage points, but you know, strategy, aggression, and control really could have gone either way at that point. The match was pretty balanced. Um, so obviously we were so excited and you can see it from our reaction as soon as they announce it um, because this was really make or break for us. You know, if we lost this fight, we would have an 0-2 record, which would you know, make it almost impossible for us to get into the top 16, which we really need to do this year to show that we're still one of the top dogs in this event. So we still have some changes to make and some uh, things to fix before our next fight. So keep an eye for the next fight card on BattleBots to see when we go on next. And we'll see you here after that fight for a BattleBots breakdown. Thanks for watching.